So, what I'll cover today is a little bit uh, of background, summarise of where we come from, uh, a little bit of, uh, of focus on some of the activities DCC are doing in the short term, and uh, a, little bit of, um, a little bit of looking forward uh, on what this platform can enable, what this platform can provide for, as you have said, the, um, the established players, the uh, new market entrants, the, the innovators uh, within the industry and from outside that in industry as well, uh, to ultimately benefit the consumer, to ultimately you know, move this country, move this industry forward into the 21st uh, century and beyond. So, as I said, DCC was established in uh, 2013 after some significant effort by government uh, to build the SMART program. Uh, it's a once in a lifetime, uh, once in a generation initiative. It's connecting every single home in the country uh, to accurately build and measure. It's treated as a critical national infrastructure. So it's the importance of the security, the criticality uh, of the system is, is fundamental to uh, what we're building collectively. What what isn't DCC? Because this, this, is, um, this is a common uh, misconception sometimes, uh, especially in the public eye of what DCC does and doesn't provide. What we don't do, we don't hold consumers' data. We don't hold consumption data. We don't see consumption data. So that's transited through our network and taken from meter uh, to the energy supplier for, they, for them to use as building purposes for their their consumer, their customer base. We don't hold personal information. That's, again, that's, uh, that's outside our scope, that's outside our network. We don't even see any, sense, any form of sensitive data and we don't, and we are not connected to the internet. We are not part of the internet, although we use uh, sort of IoT type principles and technologies uh, within the infrastructure we've deployed. So we've completed the build phase now. There's lots more to do, um, and, uh, and that's the start of our journey and focus going forward, is to really support the industry, support the innovators, support the, uh, the suppliers, the network operators, the MOPs, the MAPs, the entire value chain and supply chain in using our network, in deploying uh, the network into the consumer's home, and to get that benefit that, uh, that we're all looking for. This is what we have. Um, many of you are probably familiar with, uh, with the service providers we use. We can't use the term suppliers because that's confusing, so we, we call them service providers. So our, our, our contract entity, we use Arkiva in the north of the country for uh, uh, wide area network coverage, Telefonica in the central and south region, CGI for our data platform, BT for the, the largest uh, public key infrastructure, if you're familiar with that term, uh, arguably on the planet it will be. It's uh, managing in excess of, uh, of uh, 300 million key pairs, uh, but I'll, I'll cover the security in a bit more detail uh, further on. Uh, it's about enhancing the, uh, the home energy capability of, of our nation for consumers' benefit, uh, ultimately to reduce energy bills by 2 or 3%. Uh, and I think my, my belief is that is just the start of that activity. Uh, that is just the start of the benefit. There's so many things we can use this platform for. Uh, we can exploit this platform for to further benefit the consumer and further benefit the industry. Such things as smart appliances in the home. So we've talked about uh, the basic billing capability, but what else can we do? What else where can we use this, this, the, the platform within home, the data available in the home is provided to the IHD, the in-home display, uh, as part of the, the basic tool set that, uh, that the industry will uh, deliver to the consumer. But what else more can we do with that? And what else more can we exploit the data for there? That's where the innovation in the home comes into, and we'll hear this afternoon around smart homes and connected homes and what uh, innovation uh, is planned for the industry going forward and the consumer going forward there. It's not just about in the home as well, it's about uh, what can we, what information can we access through the network to, uh, to 
for consumers to, to uh, entrust third parties to help them make decisions, to compare energy prices, to use different services to help them switch. And we'll hear a little bit uh, later on from Compare the Market on that topic as well. But it's really around what DCC is focusing on, uh, what, what our, our, our unique position within the marketplace is. It's around you know, creating this single secure national network for suppliers, network operators and other users to use. Allowing that to deploy, supporting the rollout, it's, it's, it's a, a, a massive challenge for the industry to move from today, which is, uh, which is the start of the, the, the second generation of the SMETS2 journey, through to the end of 2020 and, and to get around all 30 plus million homes uh, deploying this new infrastructure. So that's our, our focus going forward. As I mentioned, we have uh, quite a sophisticated and significant scale of security infrastructure to keep this data secure, to keep our infrastructure secure and uh, protected against threat. So that's, the, that's another key point. And uh, the privacy and, and uh, the privacy of data is absolutely key as well. So that's another core tenant of our platform. So, what will our, what will the platform look like when it's effectively fully deployed and the 200,000 is, uh, is uh, while we are at the peak of deployment? So, we'll probably have 200 customers using our platform. So that's energy providers, other users, network operators, and so on and so forth. It's a conservative estimate, but probably 70 million messages will throw, th flow through this platform each and every day. Uh, if popularity of service and innovation uh, takes off, as I hope and as I think we all hope we'll uh, achieve, then that's a very conservative number. To achieve the 2020 targets, uh, installations may peak at 200, 250,000 installs a week, which is an incredible number, very challenging, but uh, we're, we're gearing and, and working with uh, energy suppliers to to uh, scale up and support that that requirement. I mentioned the uh, the security certificates across 33 million homes, uh, 96 million devices, so gas meters, electric meters, in-home displays, uh, comsab. So it's a significant operation, and that's without expansion into the smart homes and things like that I mentioned earlier. <coughs> I'd like to labour the point just a little bit on, on the security of our platform. It is a secure platform. It has been uh, designed in this way from the ground up, uh, heavily engaged with the, uh, what was called CESG, the uh, National Cyber Security Centre, uh, the, 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 the country's foremost expert on cyber security. Uh, so it's built into that activity. No single organisation uh, has the keys to the overall infrastructure. DCC doesn't, individual suppliers doesn't, network operators doesn't. The trust model that's been created to secure our platform makes uh, a, a threat attack required to be uh, multifaceted from multi, multiple vectors. Uh, security is designed in. Uh, it's built, that is built over and above the security mechanisms that many of the smart metering, uh, both in, in the UK today and across the world, many of the security mechanisms that are already built in there. So we're not replacing, we're building upon, or we have built upon those mechanisms. Not anyone can read uh, consumers' data. The consumers have to give permission uh, to uh, an authorised third party or their supplier for billing purposes to read their data. It is in, within the control of that consumer to make those decisions. Uh, and that is, that is not just built in at, as a, at, at, a, at a principal level, but it's built in through the entire top to bottom of our, of our architecture, of our design. We've even required uh, uh, organisations that, uh, that to wish to use our infrastructure to actually physically, the director to physically come to the DCC with their company registration documents, with their password and proof of identity, uh, to take that digital identity back to them so they can use and access our networks. So that's SPETS 2 in a nutshell, what, what we're doing in SPETS 2. There's also another initiative which is around um, the 
four, just over four million meters deployed, uh, which are of the foundation specification, the SMETS-1 specification. As many of you may, may know, we published what's called the IEPFR, which is basically the feasibility study uh, on adopting those meters at the tail end of last year. Uh, those who responded to that consultation, thank you very much. Uh, we're going through the process of that at the moment and, and we'll publish uh, at the, the, uh, the end of next month uh, at, at current plans. <clears throat> so governments ask us to, to look at the feasibility of enrolling these, uh, these uh, 4 million plus so that's one meters, bring them into the DCC management fold, allow suppliers, allow other users, allow uh, other uh, organizations within the energy chain in the energy value chain to interact with these, met in these meters in the same way as you interact with the new generation meters. So that's an activity we, we're taking very seriously uh, and we're driving uh, at speed to adopt them in a, a safe and economic manner as well. Beyond smart metering, um, there's, there's one other key activity we're, we're doing, uh, which is around fast and more reliable switching. So this is an off-gen program. We're supporting off-gen. We've just gone through the blueprint phase. We're just about to start the detailed level specification activities. This is really around... As users get to you, and it's not dependent on the smart meter infrastructure, so all, all uh, consumers will have access to this service once it's operational, but as consumers get to see more granular data, as they provide access to switching sites and services, about educating them and helping them choose a better tariff, a more, uh, a more economic tariff or, or other services around that area, they need to be able to switch more easily. So this initiative on uh, faster, more reliable switching allows that consumer to much more easily and effectively and reliably switch from one supplier to another. So that's, that's, uh, that's the activity we're, we're just at the, the start of uh, in partnership with Optum. So. so beyond these initial activities, uh, beyond creating the foundation of smart meters, beyond creating a foundation for faster, more reliable uh, switching, beyond developing these digital footprints. I'd just like to cover a couple of slides off that talks about where I think uh, we could go as an industry, where I think we could innovate beyond that and where DCC can support that innovation. We're the infrastructure provider. We provide the nuts and bolts, the pipes, the wires, the, uh, the devices, the core devices within the field. Uh, it's up to you guys as an industry, as new entrants, as established players, to drive this innovation forward. And, and this, is what we, uh, this is what the DCC is here to support. One area is, one obvious area is around uh, energy, smart home efficiency. We'll show a little bit around this later, whether it's intelligent heating, uh, uh, helping consumers to be more cost aware, changing their behaviours in new ways above and beyond uh, the, uh, the in-home display information that's provided. By doing this, uh, consumers can be more intelligent in the use of their energy uh, and, and therefore reduce their bills. We see this already happening within the industry, within the smart, uh, the smart meter uh, consumers we have today. So Tide Energy, you see at the beginning of the year, sorry, Green Energy at the beginning of the year, introduced the Tide Tariff, High Tide, Low Tide, British Gas has done similar sort of things. And many of the other energy companies have done very similar activities to start introducing awareness of effectively peak rate energy and, uh, and uh, reduced rate energy. This starts to build that innovation platform, that impetus for, for users to understand energy needs and the, the point at which energy costs could increase in certain times of the day, week, month, year, uh, or decrease of that, of that area. But it's not just around smart energy. It's, it's potentially around changing the way uh, as, as, uh, as citizens, as consumers, we, we live our lives. Again, this digital platform, this access to energy cost information can, exploit, uh, can be exploited into so much more that benefits the consumer. 
whether it's around smart appliances, whether it's around intelligent storage, whether it's around electric vehicles and, uh, and how, that, uh, how that affects the generation, distribution and storage of energy. Um, a, a couple of years ago, as so I sat down with uh, some, uh, some uh, senior technologists from the IEEE uh, around electric vehicles, and uh, they shared with me that an electric vehicle uh, consumes roughly three and a half days of energy of typical household energy consumption in a single charge. Um, what happens when two, three, five million electric vehicles are being charged at 2 a.m.? Suddenly, that's the most that, that's the highest demand point uh, within our within uh, for for electricity within the country. How do we manage that? How do we cope with that? How do we manage the distribution? This building these sorts of platforms is what smart meter infrastructure is uh, is designed to lay the foundations for. We can't do it without that. It's not just about the consumer's home is not just about uh, what, what we can directly support the consumers in terms of dec decision in, uh, and information uh, in the consumer area. It's also around the wider energy network. Uh, it's also around becoming smarter through distribution, through generation. These are steps that Ofgem published their Smarter, More Flexible Energy uh, Systems paper a little while ago that starts to introduce these sorts of concepts. The digital foundation is being laid with SMART uh, to measure demand side. We need to do the same in terms of the distribution network. We need to do the same as an industry in terms of the generation activity to build this supply and demand balancing and measurement activity to become more effective uh, in the way we build power stations, generate energy, distribute it, and as well as consume it. Imagine a world where 10 million of the 30 plus million homes in the country have solar cells. Uh, imagine 5 million or, or the, uh, the, the fancy new uh, roof tiles from, from Tesla. Uh, 5 million of them maybe have uh, storage in their garage, so a, a battery type arrangement. What does that do to generation? What does that do to distrib centralized distribution versus the redistribution and balancing of energy? What if it's raining in Manchester but sunny in Liverpool? What do we do? How do we manage the grid? How do we manage consumption? How do we price energy in those, uh, in those scenarios? All challenges we have in, as an industry in front of us and all challenges we need a digital platform for to start <laughs> developing upon. To close... As uh, Francis Bacon said, uh, knowledge is power. We're starting to measure the information, measure the energy consumption, which is the start of that delivering knowledge and in delivering knowledge into the hands of the consumer. Uh, that is very powerful if then we can innovate beyond that as an industry and provide those services to the consumer both for direct consumer benefit and indirect consumer benefit in terms of energy generation, distribution, storage, and so forth. We put an end to estimated bills as an industry. We're putting, uh, making through the, uh, the Smart Energy B GB campaign with Gaz and Netty, Lecky, uh, that the power within the hands of the consumer to make those decisions to move forward. This is the foundation, this is the, uh, the capability that we're looking to deploy uh, with energy suppliers, with the industry to go forward to create a more flexible, dynamic, effective, efficient energy system. I think the £5.7 billion overall benefit, uh, I think that's quite conservative if we innovate, if we generate more services, more capability, more knowledge, more help to the consumer to make better decisions, smarter appliances uh, and smarter services into the home and for the consumer for the energy generation and distribution networks. But that time will tell that. Uh, our platform is here to, to innovate upon. Uh, we're not going to do it for you, but we will support you in that activity. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, uh, Matthew. What I've uh, heard and I uh, want to believe everyone shares is uh, a job well done. There is a platform now up and running. Uh, it is future-proof. It is for the industry to take uh, uh, the benefits uh, out of it. Uh, we've got uh, time for one, maybe max two questions, if we can. Um, Energy UK, um, I, when I asked them why uh, energy suppliers hadn't changed back billing for smart meters customers from 12 months to 6 months, they basically blamed you guys, um, said you're uh, not fully operational and testing is ongoing and there's not enough volume of meters on I just wondered what your response to that was. So we're, we're working very closely with, uh, with industry, with suppliers to complete uh, their testing of our platform. Uh, for, in order for uh, energy supplies to roll out uh, the, the second generation metering, metering devices need to work with the DCC platform, the back office systems need to work with the DCC platforms, and any kinks with the, over, the overall interaction through that ecosystem needs to be worked out. So we're supporting them through testing. It is the energy uh, supplies decision on, on when they start rolling out. Perfect. One more. Hi, I'm Emily Gustin from The Times. Just trying to understand why it has taken so long to get to the point of going live and why you're still in testing. Um, and also, one of the issues that we keep hearing is about these, uh, the meters not working properly in tower blocks and things like that. Is that something that's within the DCC's gift to solve? or And if so, are you solving it? Or uh, whose responsibility is that? Thank you. Uh, so, the first... Sorry, could you remind me of the first question? Why has it taken so long? Okay, the... the it's, it's taking so long. This, this is a, a once in a gener generation activity. It's a, it's a brand new critical national infrastructure to deploy for our nation to support that. It's highly secure, it's highly sophisticated. Um, and we needed to get it right, absolutely right. So it's taken a little bit longer than originally envisioned uh, five or so years ago. In terms of uh, challenges in, uh, in different property types, so the, the, the home area network, uh, the initial iteration of that home area network is designed to support 70% of property types, and that's what's live and available today. We are working um, to deploy the next iteration of that, which is a, um, to technical terms, a sub-gigahertz frequency, which will, uh, which will uh, cover well above 90, 96% or thereabouts. Uh, of different property types, uh, and that's what we're, we're building and working to deliver at the moment, that, that enhancement. The, the final element is, uh, is uh, delivered by uh, uh, another part of the, the, uh, the energy ecosystem called uh, Altanco, which is a, a, a term that rolls off the tongue, but an alternative home area network activities. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Matthew. I'm sure that you've got a lot more questions to, uh, to Matthew, but you're going to be around during refreshments? Good afternoon, yes. Perfect. Uh, if you could uh, join me thanking Matthew, um, that would be great. <laughs>